What's happening, everybody? It's your man, Dame DNYDC, host of the Two Mics Up podcast. Back again with our lovely queen of the show, Elisa Middleton. What's happening with you today, sis? How you feeling? I'm here, blessed, highly favored, glad to be here and alive. God woke me up, so I'm okay. You know, I'm feeling that way. It's been a heavy week, bro. Yeah, a heavy, heavy, heavy week. So yeah, I'm staying yeah. close to the cross because <laughs> <laughs> I feel you on that. You, you, it never lied. Um, your your words, your words are uh, resonating and coming through so loud and clear. Um, it's been a real real heavy ass week and you know we go from like the dmx the trial you know right i mean you know we had you know what i'm saying it, it, it's hard and then you know we touched on our live you know that we had this talking about being mad as hell with everything that's going on and you know, uh, I, I saw you appear on, on another, you know, show and, you know, the conversation there was, was really, it was, it was heated. It was heavy, you know, and it was, it, you know, it was really heavy. And I don't know, I'm just still, I think we're still in that mood or that mode of that conversation. And, you know, today I think it was really great or be great for us to continue our live conversation to kind of navigate a few things when it comes to like, first and foremost, like the George Floyd trial, um, you know, I think I mentioned at the end, like people, you know, I think our community should really be prepared for the worst. Right. And I think we'll get into that. I think we'll, we'll probably follow up after the trial, after, you know, they mitigate what's going on. And I want to, right. I want to save that for that conversation, but I do want to touch on the trial in the sense of just what I've seen you know, from, you know, just kind of like breaking down that blue wall, you know, through the trial and through some of the conversations. And when I say that, you know, I just want to take a few minutes, you know, I'm kind of looking through my notes here because it was just so much going on and so much emotion. You know how you just got things. Right. You know what I'm saying? Just written right. everywhere. Right. So this gave me a minute as I just try to kind of read through some of my notes. because I, But I want to take a little different spin on this because mm -hmm. I, I do think we did see a lot of great things, you know, from, from the defense and, and the part, you know, just everything going on. So let me just talk real quick. You know, I think there was a good job done in really humanizing George Floyd. You know, I think his team really did a great job showing him as a human being, a man in the community and all the things that he was tied into. Right. And I thought it was really great that the testimony that they got from the bystanders, who were there, um, even his brother, his brother, oh my God, I, I think that's what they call, um, let me see, I, I wrote it down because it stood out to me, it was a, a spark of life testimony, which, you know, it it, it was so, chill. like, I'm sitting here now, me too. like, I'm, you know what I'm saying, like, I, I have chills too, because they, the prosecution did a good job of, like you said, humanizing him and they right. did a good job in making a case especially with the brother and mm -hmm. especially with his girlfriend I right. mean because uh, we all fall short right yes. of the glory yes. of God yes. being a drug addict or you know, or um, struggling with addiction no matter yeah. what it is is right. a human thing right yes. Yes. Um, we all know or have been there you know but we believe that redemption right, is mm -hmm. the way, because if we threw away Malcolm X, okay, where would we be? Where would we be? Okay? Exactly. Because if mm -hmm. you want to talk about criminals and drugs and selling and doing all of that, we have so many grades. It does not mean that you deserve to be killed by the hands yeah. of the police because you're struggling with addiction. Agreed. <laughs> Agreed. And I, I just, like I said, you know, that along with what you did along with what you said, I think the state also did a really good job of their expert witnesses and the expert testimony that they provided, um, you know, the medical evidence and really how they really touched on the use of force, you know, testimony by bringing in, you know, 
I mean, the blue wall of silence was broken, you know, because these experts were actually officers who finally, and in, in, in my opinion, had look. I'm just gonna call, had the balls to stand up. They had really, them. yeah. But I mean, but and you know, and I know, I know that argument does come in some places, and I agree with you to a degree because I had someone else that I was talking to about because the world was watching. Mm-hmm. It's like you know, and and I get that. But we've been, and I and I say this to having the balls in so many instances, at least you and I and so many of us have talked that there's a lack of commitment or someone being not afraid to stand up, whether the cameras are on, whether the world is watching or not. In so many different instances, we've been let down. And this was the first time that, yes, the world is watching, but people are standing up. And I think now we can see moving forward that if we continue to push this, and expect this and demand this, we should start seeing this in every case moving forward that in, involves, and, and I mean, you know what I'm saying? I mean, we got we got to demand expectation, though. You you know what I'm you, saying? You're right in the demanding, but the reason why I say they have no choice because it was nowhere to hide, right? Agreed, agreed. This man is face down in a prone position mm-hmm. on the floor with three grown men on his body, right? Yeah. And, right. and one on his neck. Right. Um, so there was no gun. There was no threat of gun. There was no compliant issue. There was no, there was nowhere to hide. Mm-hmm. Right. And with all the violence that, um, and I don't want to say violence, I want to say uprising that mm-hmm. happened after George Floyd, the world is watching and we're mm-hmm. tired and you know, we're tired, but eh, I don't want to put any expectation on it because uh, we have been down this road before, and here we sit in the same town. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, and it's, I, I get, I look, I agree, but I think we have to take our opportunities to, you know, you and I talk a lot of it. You know, we got to press the issue, and I think yeah. this is something that we not only take now, though, as as an underlying culture of just the Minneapolis Police Department. This is an underlying culture of every police department, and we. Every I don't I don't care how you cut it. And I think, yes, the cameras were on for this one. You know, the cameras may have been on for for uh, the unfortunate murder of Dante. Right. The young man that that they conspired to hide the young boy, the 13 year old in Chicago. So we know this is is underlying in every police department. But now I think, again, we now have ammunition and we have to keep keep our guns loaded and, and pressed and ready to fire to make this happen and make this a part of every, whether it be every trial, whether it becomes something that becomes, I don't know, uh, institutionalized. I don't say that's a bad word, but becomes a program or something that we institute in these police departments for change. Like we have to really use these moments uh, to push things moving forward. Don't just let them go by the wayside because I, I really, and again, I don't want to dispute what you're saying, but just because the cameras was on a lot of times now, the cameras are on for everything. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, and they're off, and they're and and there's so many that do not make it nationally, and there's so many who are not filmed, and yeah. there's you know there's so many we've seen this. We come, you know, we're of us a particular age, mm-hmm. so we've seen this well before cell phones. True, true. We saw this well before national news because Facts. we were not national news unless we were mm-hmm. on the uh brutal end, end of, of it, right? Yeah, yeah, disparaging end of it. So now you have the young people gonna keep on saying it. I'm gonna mm-hmm. salute you. All day, yep. respect. All day, every mm-hmm. day, everything that you do, because yep. these young people are making it known. And even in the way that we see, we're starting to see a different, a small, minute change in reporting and yep. how it's being reported. Because yeah. with the George Floyd trial, um, excuse me, with the Derek Chauvin trial, mm-hmm. um, they were calling it the George Floyd trial. And well, I, I, I only do it because I don't, I'm not I don't want to get that dude any any power coming out of my mouth. But I get what you're saying. George Floyd is dead. He's you're not. Right. And it's he's not. Savage trial. And you're Black right. Twitter stood up against calling it the George Floyd trial because we are always on trial in public opinion. Right. OK. Fair always enough. Always on trial. And, and, and as you see, 
George Floyd character was on mm-hmm. trial. He, oh, yeah. His yeah, de- agreed. Uh, Chauvin's defense uh, put George Floyd's character on trial. You know, mm-hmm. they even uh, tried to say that he had so much drugs that the drugs were the reason yeah. when he was upright talking and video footage the first time we've seen yeah. him during the trial is him alive. In mm-hmm. the grocery store, talking with people, he wasn't nodding out to the floor or gasping for air or looked like that he was in any kind of distress right. or anything. But they put him and his character on. Mm-hmm. I think the prosecution did a fantastic job. I think their witnesses were authentic. I think they right. were um, definitely credible witness yeah. because yeah. you know they were witness after witness and defense did a horrible job the police union in um, <laughs> that, <laughs> that is paying for this defense crazy did not really show out enough money hell no that defense was <laughs> it was terrible it was almost on public defender status to me it, 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 <laughs> it was laughable you know what i'm saying it was laughable yeah because we went from the wild crowd that was why of the 10 to 12 people that was out there, the ruling or, or right. the crowd was right. as a reason why he wasn't turned from the prone position onto yeah. his back. That was debunked and disputed, <laughs> right? And then they went to carbon monoxide. That so that yeah, that was a good that was a look. I he thought tried. <laughs> he tried to he, he, he tried that. <laughs> he got paid, right? He got, yeah. he got yeah, so he yeah. did what he came for, but unfortunately, right. um, as a doctor, he couldn't go forward with the lie. No, no. Because, you know, the, the prosecution was on him like white or right. right. Like, they would not even let up. At one point, I thought he was going to choke when they was asking him questions. <laughs> I thought he was going to... He, he, <laughs> I thought he was going to choke. <laughs> you know how I still when we, when we doing our broadcast. You know how I look back I see myself and I can't sit still. I'm yep. Yo, this man was squirming. Yeah, what was he? he? Was like, I was like, yeah, this dude about to bust. He about to explode, <laughs> right? Because <laughs> he had nothing. I mean, because he was like, yo, so I don't want to lie, but can I lie? Like, some like he's looking at the bench. He's like, somebody, y'all gonna help me? Y'all gonna help me or not? But it ain't worth my license. It ain't worth <laughs> no. me losing my license. That little money I made. Nope. Like, how do you know the car was even on? Did someone state to you that they took right. the car on or off? Is this anywhere, any of the reports that you read? Right. That went out. Then he said that he died because of the large heart. The heart, and yep. The, and the fentanyl. Yeah. Then that got debunked. And that went out the window. And I was just like, you know what? Yeah, Let's yeah. just. But we, we've been down on. this road. So right. We've been down it. Yeah. We don't want to get our hopes up that we will see this murder charge actually stick. You know what I'm I mean? Gonna, I'm going to pray. And you know, I, I've been praying, uh, but like I said, you know, and I live and I'll say it again today, you know, just be prepared, you know, for being let down. We've seen and we know what let down feels like. And one of our uh, audience uh, suggested, you know, that, you know, this could be, you know, uh, Rodney King. This going to look like child's play if, you know, so now I, in my heart, I'm praying that it doesn't, but I'm just gonna be real and say let's be prepared for the worst and 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 we already as um black people we are already prepared right Mm -hmm. our Mm -hmm. our defenses is already up we see this kind of behavior all the time all the time and we see uh these shams of trials and this and that and then we've seen like in oscar grant we've seen the charge stick but right. and you didn't do your full time. You did eleven months of a ten year sentence. Of a ten year sentence, right? Was let out, and I personally know people who are still incarcerated from, um, you know, the nineties. You know, right. what I mean? for right. drugs right. and um, and murder and murder, and, mm-hmm. and they and they and they they, they get their full sentence, and they and they as they should, you know, as far as a full sentence for murder, right? But uh, the drugs, drug the thing, drugs, yeah. I mean, with the we, yeah, come on, is legal in, right? In so many states, and if you're gonna make it legal, let these people let these people go, right? right? I agree, I agree. So that's 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 that, you know. <laughs> yeah, I'm with you. I'm with you 200. So you know, I I want to. 
kind of speak and move to another thing that um, popped up over the weekend. You know, our sister, you know, one of one of our leaders out here that's really putting in the work. You know, Maxine Waters is out here, you know, in Minnesota. Auntie Maxine. Auntie. In yo, yeah, you understand? Yo, telling them, yo, <laughs> stay out here in these streets. Yes. Don't, don't. <laughs> yo, I love her. And, yo, I'm just going to keep it real how I keep it real. This ain't Maxine, but she's like, fuck that. Y'all, we staying out here in these streets. And we we need to really get behind what's going on. And I, I love the energy. And I would like to see more of our actual leaders come out really and stand with her and stand beside her and really push this because I do feel that it's needed. It is. You know, it, it is. This, it's our right to do so. And we should not be punished. We should not be subjugated to fear of losing our lives, being beanbagged, being pepper sprayed, being assaulted and antagonized wow. by the police. You understand what I'm saying? And I, I, it's ridiculous, but I love the fact that when you see this, it is for me, this makes me draw back and like, okay, so um, where's everybody else? Where's all of the rest of our leaders at? Because they are too busy um, toting the fence mm. because they may speak out against the injustice and police brutality and the inequality of black America but they're talking to it from a place far removed, right? Mm -hmm. And then they okay. still have their constituents, so they still have to say um, a cold word and cold mm -hmm. slogans where they're truly backing the police. Because <laughs> when you tell me to, when you put your emphasis on the protest, the violence, the looting, the raiding, and we haven't seen any of this, right? Right, we right cities burnt down like, right we right. have not seen any of this but the the spin is on the protesters to remain main people. yeah and mm -hmm. that's the part that gets my goat because mm -hmm. why are you speaking to us why are you speaking i know where you're going i know you i'm with you i know where you're going to the police because literally we out here protesting police brutality while protesting police brutality getting brutalized by the police. By the police. <laughs> okay. Like, if you, what are you, like... Ah, uh, yo, tell it. Come on. Tell it. So and that... It just, it just, it my, and I'm, I'm proud of Maxine Waters for, you know, showing up. Oh, all day. Showing up. All day. And I, and I just hope, and, and I, 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 I do hear you. And, you know, you, you do bring up valid points or points, um, you know, those in office, and I understand you have constituents, but I think now we're at a time where, and I, how do I say, stop being a politician, right? Just, just for five minutes, right? Stop being a politician and be a human being because this affects everyone. Even your own constituents are black and brown and are experiencing the same issues. And it's really, look, the pol the political rhetoric, hey, look, you're not running, look, I get all that. Yeah, but take five minutes and be a human being and step out and talk about, and, and I see your face. I, I know, I know, I, I see it. I see it, but you, but, but this that, is the thing that, five, it's got to change. Bro, that five minutes costs money, right? Uh, yeah. Because I, now when you are playing politics like the, nobody plays politics like the United States of America. Okay. Okay. Right? So right. When you talk about politics, politics, capitalism, and um, a big corporation go hand in hand. All day. Right? All day. So all day. When you say um, 80, 90 percent of us black or white all agree on the same issue. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the five to 10 percent that we disagree is what keeps the money flowing. Right. I, I get it. Yep. We all want to identify with something. We right. all want to identify as a Democrat. We want to identify as a Republican. And none of them have our interests at heart. At heart. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So here we are. Now, we've asked. we've we The things that we've asked for after George Floyd, right? Mm -hmm. We've asked for throughout the entire country. Right. Abolish, defund, and reform, and rebuild, take it down the police department and reimagine thinking and policing in this country. And we didn't do it. No. The things that we asked for, we didn't get. 
Because here we are with a 20 year old who mm. uh, Dante uh, Wright right, who just yeah. got shot. And then we have Mr. Toledo, 13 years old. I mean, I can't even call him Mr. He's a boy. He's a boy. Yeah, yeah, this young man, he shot dead in the streets with his hands up. So, yep. you know what? It's not, you know, do, do the right thing. And we've been telling you for 402 years that policing in this country and racism. Racism. Because yep. mm -hmm. that's what backs it is the yeah. racism. But yeah. you don't want to address the racism. Racism. And I, I agree. Country. You only want to address it when it don't, when it does not concern black people. Well, but you know I what? No, you but you know, you bring up a good point. <laughs> Even with that, because I, I read somewhere, I think it was, um, so today, the brother, uh, the brother of the man, New York, uh, Cuomo, Chris Cuomo, uh, mm -hmm. he really exemplified what you said just then. Things will not change or racism will not be addressed in America until white kids are being killed in the streets. And I had to pause on that. He so, said, you know, he said it. <laughs> Because, you know, that, that's the only time that things are addressed when you really look back. You know, the crack epidemic in, in the black neighborhoods, yeah, yeah, no problem. Let them kill themselves. But now we got the the heroin and, and the meth and all this that's exploding through the white neighborhoods. It's an, epide it's an, it's an epidemic that has to be handled, has to be taken care of. It's a medical problem now. It's yeah, right, no right. You know what I'm saying? Criminal. No, 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 right. Yeah. It's no longer criminal. So, so now it, it's a medical, medical problem. problem right now. We got to deal with it me uh, medically, but yes. the crack pandemic, uh, let them kill themselves. And, right. You know, and they were it's a criminal act. It's a criminalized. Right. So, yes. you know, just in that short synopsis. And then when I, like I said, when I saw it and, and I read it, cause I had to read it back like three or four times and really look at him and, you know, like, you know, shit, that's, that's really how this country works. It's not until right. it affects a white kid or a white community. Right. That then we want to address the problem. Right. But, you know, we're, we're going to, like I said, I'm going to return back and pray that just for five minutes, look, they won't be human beings or be people, but just talk real. Like, I think we're really over the, the rhetoric. And I think that's what further frustrates me. I, well, I can say for myself, it frustrates me. Don't talk to me uh, with the rhetoric. Talk to me as a person. Talk to me as a human being, because it's all it's all the same. Uh, across the board for all of us, but I'm, I'm going to leave that because I want to move into <laughs> the flip side. The flip side of like the injustice and police brutality that mm -hmm. we deal with. And we had a uh, I'm sorry, I hit the wrong button. Excuse me, people. Uh, the lady up in uh, the police officer that was fired, uh, her name was Carol Horn, uh, mm -hmm. for stopping her fellow officer right. from choking a handcuffed man. And the flip side is, so this was back once it was like 2005, 2006. Mm -hmm. uh, she was just vindicated by mm -hmm. a New York court, mm -hmm. you know, for, for doing her job. Mm -hmm. Now, isn't it ironic, though, that it was a black woman who, a black officer, mm -hmm. who stepped in and did her job, but it mm -hmm. took so long mm -hmm. for her to be vindicated. Mm -hmm. If that was a, and I'm just going to ask, let's just play devil's advocate. Mm -hmm. If it was white, a white woman or a white officer that did that, do you think that this would have taken that long to even be discussed? Or even. She... <laughs> 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 well, let's just keep it real. Would the white officer have even stopped the oh. um, choking oh. out of the suspect? Oh, good point. Now, that's a good point. Let's, let's circle back. And number two, what did she do wrong? Why was she fired for stopping a handcuffed person from being brutalized by her officer? I would have thought that she would have been rewarded for doing, doing her, her job, job, her job, that manner, and also checking her partner. But because of white fragility, she mm. couldn't handle that a black woman up, up, stepped up to him and opposed his action because mm. now she's crossed over that thin blue line. And I like people to understand that there are many of black officers out here that are getting it as well. That oh, yeah. Are speaking oh, up, yeah. But we don't hear from them because they are most likely silenced. Right. Or fired. Right. No, I, I agree. Because they just don't go along with the status quo. I couldn't agree with you more on that one. And, 
I, I just I, you brought up a very good point because I never really thought of um, the flip side of you know like we so candidly like to call now you know white fragility. You know the same thing with the this uh, woman who killed uh, Dante Wright. You know barricaded up in her uh, that her the barricading of her home and all of these different the things. Fencing. I mean. The oh, I call it barricade. Back- yeah, it's a barricade. Right. It, it ain't no fencing. Then the barricade and then the police cards. No, you're We're going to give it layers. Let's give it layers. Okay. Let's give it okay, full full color home. disclosure layer. Yeah, her home is fully protected and surrounded and she's no longer a police department a police officer right she and is no longer employed employed so who's fitting this bill and not one person showed up to her house because right. we don't have time for you right no. at this moment no we battling down in south carolina we got battles in texas texas we got battles mm-hmm. in in in, in uh, Chicago, we're yep. battling everywhere. DC, because did you hear about the uh, Tacoma Park uh, off duty? Yeah, uh, federal with, with the, officer was it with the young two, boy? Two men dead, two. Oh, no, I must have missed yeah. that one. I, I... No, yes, in here in our area, um, uh, his name is, I think I wrote this down here. His name is David Dixon. Um, Mm -hmm. He's a Pentagon police and he lives in Tacoma Park, Maryland, and he killed two black unarmed black men because he observed them stealing their car. So observing two men stealing the car means that they should be shot and killed. Um, yeah, I missed that. I'm going to have to go back and read on that oh, one. Yeah, his name I is missed Dixon. that one. Dixon. Yeah, he's a Pentagon police. He was off duty. He's arrested. He's in jail, but he shot them because he said that he told them to stop and they did not. Now, I know I've been removed from the police department 20 something years, but mm-hmm. I'm pretty sure that you cannot kill anyone for property. I'm almost right. certain right. that that is um, a thing. Like, you can't kill anyone for property. But the part here that, you, that kills me, so he wasn't a police officer. He was Pentagon police. This thing Pentagon, right. federal office. And, he's and, a, and he looks like, and I don't want to um, sound stereotype, mm-hmm. but yeah, he looks like he's of uh, maybe Asian descent or, or something like that. Mm. But um, yeah, he did. He shot two two men um, as the, because he uh, says that he told them to stop and they did not. So he killed them. They're dead. So, I mean, and again, this, this weird, I mean, this thing, it's like every day now. It's, it's getting no, it, right. I mean, and I agree with you because some days I sit here and I laugh out of anger, you know, to help control myself. But it's too much of this same story going on. And again, wrong is wrong, but there you're supposed to be. You're an alleged trained officer. You cannot tell me that you could not even look. Even if you were afraid and you wanted to stop them by yourself, you mean you could not. Detain them in a manner, whether it be with stun guns or look shooting somebody in the leg or the foot to slow them down. There's they different didn't run. ways. They just continue to steal the car. So right, that's what I'm saying. Car's license plate. Wait a minute now. Let's call it. You can call it in. You can call it into the police. Right. Right. Because committing a crime is not a death sentence. No, this it's is not. Why I have the industrial prison symptom system? Right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So now. You there's it's almost like okay, so you are with and I'm gonna always use ear quotes with this mm-hmm. training, right? Right, you're right. a trained federal police officer, right? And you kill two unarmed men for stealing a car. A car. I mean, the, the, this is shit is just crazy. Like it, it blows my mind when you hear just on the surface the background. So two men, again, and I want everybody to be clear. Look, a crime is a crime. I get that. You're doing, you're, you're doing, you're perpetrating an act that's unlawful. Got it. But they weren't holding, they weren't at um, gunpoint. They weren't armed gunpoint. There was no one else involved. No, this is a federal officer. Awful. 
There was no right, fight. no scuffle, no nothing. This there federal no officer fight. decides because he gave them commands that they did not follow that they deserved to, to lose their life. Right. But I just the I can't. Nation is because they're criminals that they were doing something unlawful, and I'm saying, okay, so now we don't need our court system anymore. We don't need to well, be in front of a judge because you are not judge, jury, and execution. Well, that's, that's not your you bring job. Up the, it's not your job, but it brings up the point. So let's just say me. And I don't know, another male friend of mine, let's say I locked my keys in my car and that was my car. And you walk up and so I, I could lose my life for trying to get into my own car because you decide to be judge, jury, and executioner. Because that, that's really a flip side to it too. Basically. Just, basically. Crazy. Basically. It makes no sense whatsoever. Yeah. <sighs> Man, I, I got to go back and read about that one. I, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, and that's right here in our local area, so. Yeah, I, I, I've been so tuned into everything. I That's crazy. Well, mm -hmm. one of the last things that I just wanted to touch on and we touched on the other night was, you know, COVID. You know, these COVID is, I mean, it's still here. It seems like it's more rampant now than it was when it first got here. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, that on the news, though. Like you, no, used. no. They're pushing that vaccine, and um, but the COVID, go COVID is is definitely uh, <laughs> you know, it, it's, again. It is, and and the thing about it, so I read, so like five states really are like petri dishes for this COVID explosion. You know, mm -hmm. Pennsylvania, Michigan. Uh, I think it's uh, Florida, New York, and New Jersey. Mm -hmm. It's like a petri dish. So, mm -hmm. one, you know, with the vaccines coming out, and you know, I think mm -hmm. we're we're all becoming more educated on the vaccines. Mm -hmm. uh, nobody, uh, just play this back before I say this. I'm not against Johnson and Johnson, but don't get Johnson and Johnson uh, until they get the the situation figured out. Because there's no reason why uh, this one particular vaccine um, people are experiencing fatal side effects mm -hmm. and our, and our women, especially. Mm -hmm. um, so I would just say, you know, be mindful of that, but with these vaccinations and even now talking about booster shots, you know, I saw Oregon just release, I think it was today that they're going to man, they're going to mandate masks be worn or continuously be worn, even with those people who get vaccinated and to further notice. Mm -hmm. Now I know a lot of people are probably going to be mad about that, but how do you feel like, cause I don't, I don't think that's a bad idea. Cause we still don't, in my opinion, don't know what we're, really dealing with and if people are still getting the shots or getting vaccinated and still getting covid and still passing away from it then why not continue to wear, wear the mask or even mandate that moving forward i think the mask should be worn i think the mask is going to be a part of our life for um a pretty long time um because we're just finding out the effects of covid19 from people that were affected and lived and survived from last year. So right. now we're finding lasting um, effects. And now they gave, they gave, they've uh, given these people, excuse me, uh, a name and they're right. called long callers. They're called yeah, long callers. Yeah, I heard, I read that. Right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. The people who are now, um, who survived COVID last year, but they're having long-term effects mm -hmm. uh fatigue uh chronic right. cough that doesn't go away uh respiratory issues i know two people personally who survived covid had it bad but they are going through they are part of the long callers and it's a very sad thing to see because it's like not all doctors recognize the long callers. It's just mm -hmm. becoming a thing. And then right. they're, now they're starting to um, research a little, little bit more and spreading the word a little bit more because it, they're looking at these people um, like, you, you're you better now. Why, why are you still coming here? You shouldn't be having this. And so mm -hmm. you have some doctors that don't believe that these people are experiencing what they are experiencing hmm. and um, misdiagnosing them and things like that. Hmm. And what's so funny is, is that when they see the change in uh, act, 
active people. Like there's right. this lady, she was, um, I, cause I, I watched a whole video and then some, uh, reading material. She was a long term, uh, uh, bicyclist, mm -hmm. a marathon. She, she, on Sunday, she said she rode a bike 65 miles. Now wow. that's a healthy human being. Wow. Right. Right. Because, uh, I can't do 65 <laughs> in a vehicle with four wheels. And I'm just yes, saying. <laughs> so now she was so fatigued. Uh, she lost so much weight um, because it was just too tiring for tiring. her to even eat. Right. Mm. It was too wow. tiring for her. She was an avid reader. She couldn't even read a book. She was just having this Damn. chronic fatigue. Mm. And That's now, crazy. and there's others who are having a chronic cough. They're getting um, x-rays, -ray, x MRIs, nothing is showing up. But you can hear the chronic, you know, the core, and they're having shortness of breath and these things. But the thing that they all have in common is that they survive COVID. They survive COVID. have these lasting symptoms. So if we are just learning right. about people who survive COVID, COVID and what they're going, they're going through, through and the possible ramifications for other people who may get infected and survive COVID. I don't, I don't know. Well, yeah, the, we're the, in a whole new realm of the vaccine. Like right? How pushing forward would this vaccine be even be? It, right? Because what's going right. to be next year? What's right? Exactly. Who got, like you know exactly. This makes my mind because a year in the medical field is not a long time. No, so, no. When you're doing no. medical studies of people and conditions and viruses and things like that, I mean, just look at the AIDS virus. Look how exactly long, long it that took. took. For people mm -hmm. to actually survive this virus and the research that it took and even to find out that it exactly. wasn't um uh the lgbtq community right they first said first said it, exactly it, it was you know it was heterosexuals it was everyone right it was so, everyone you know it'll be interesting have to take some time I'm I'm with you on that, you know, because we I just think we're in a we're still in the exploratory phase exactly with this. Right. And we really just don't know, like right. you said, I mean, here it is. We've had a full cycle. I like to think of a year as a cycle of really having enough data to really sit down and look at. Mm -hmm. And these vaccines, um, again, I do believe for, for many people, yeah, it, it's good. You're going to need it. And I think, you know, we've talked about you're going to need this for the rest of your life. Mm -hmm. similar to you know unfortunately those who've had age mm -hmm. where people were dying early on but once you know it's probably 10 or 12 years in once they really had the research mm -hmm. and really all the data mm -hmm. to really get a vaccine started and going to where now people are able to function you know pretty much you know the HIV is no, it's really, it's almost like it's not even existent anymore mm -hmm. in people's mm -hmm. systems. So mm -hmm. I think we are light years away from this. And I really think that I, I hope Americans, or just not even Americans, just human beings just really start caring more about each other. And I'm all for the mass mandate. Mm -hmm. If it really means it can help you uh, protect yourself and someone else or others. Mm -hmm. Until we can get through the cycles mm -hmm. of, you know, the data and, and getting prop i think we need proper testing i don't think the testing and development of these vaccines were really done obviously they, they were rushed you know we did mm -hmm. six months what we did in six months what normally takes 10 years mm -hmm. so i think you know we really need to step back now as 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 human beings and really try to get on board and if, if masking up is going to help if shutting down certain things is going to help i think we really need to really look into those seriously Right, uh, well, globally, because they're talking about booster shots, right? And and you, and you don't know now, they're saying that they don't know if the booster shot is going to be every six months or right. is it one time, so right, they're still working as this train is in motion, in motion. and yep. things are, tra are changing, and their new information is coming up, right? And we're seeing a new strand, and I just can't, I can't. I just, me personally, I'm mm. just, I'm just not, I just not trusting enough um, of a government um, that of like ours to, you uh, know, give me 
anything because as I became an adult, I don't take any um, um, vaccines or anything like that. Just right. because I, I mean, you couldn't even get the Flint. You didn't right. care enough yeah, about right. Flint, Michigan water. Water, right? And, I, sure. and you don't even care about my life as I'm being mm -hmm. killed by the police. Right. You don't even care about me as an African American woman who has a higher mortality mortality rate when I give birth in the hospital, and who when I go to the hospital for pain or treatment, I'm not believed. I'm most likely going to die in the right. process of childbirth in 2021 in the 20th century i mean and i just somehow i just don't believe you're yeah you, you're not there you, they're not there for us in the same capacity a support capacity so i believe that you yeah. that you want to yeah no save me no yeah no <laughs> uh, I, I i call bs on that i'm gonna call the bs but I, I, put the I, bs I, button I, on yeah i need to put the bs because button on the screen back I know it's yeah. about money. So if it's and just say if it's about money, it's about money. I'm not an right. anti-vaxxer. I'm not that person because I understand that it's a personal choice for everyone. And my personal choice is to wait. Right. Well, I agree. Well, you know, that's really all I have for today, Lise. I think we did a great job. I just wanted to kind of touch on those things and really extend that conversation from our lives. I really hope. Um, that our listeners and our followers will stay tuned. We will be coming back live uh, with, the once, verdict. <laughs> with the verdict. So y'all stay tuned because I don't know what, what's the word. I don't know because we might be madder and not as hell, but as as because uh, we're going to come back, though, and I'm going to pray that it, it turns out right. But we're going to come back live and we're going to discuss that verdict. Uh, we also have uh, another segment that uh we introduced today, you know, check it out. Facebook, uh, Instagram, we come in with our open mic segment. Uh, we asked the question, you know, what's your reaction and how you feel about the George Floyd or Derek Chauvin trial? I uh, just want to get your feelings uh, and your input and your take, you know, leave us a, a short message or send us a video. And Lisa and I will sit down and we'll go through some of these and you, you never know. Those of you who kind of really strike a chord or we find like, yo, you really have something to say. You may actually see yourself sitting right here with us on a on an episode as a panel guest. You know, we're really looking forward to, to hearing from you all. We also uh, want to take a second. I want to thank this week. Um, I hit, well, that was the question, uh, but that wasn't correct. I also <laughs> I also want to thank, uh, you know, our sponsors, Next Level Keys and Riddick Entertainment for supporting Two Mics Up. Uh, we really, uh, we really appreciate them really rocking with us. We'll have a brand new sponsor actually that'll be joining the team in the next week. So look forward because that sponsor will be joining me on our King's Corner this coming Wednesday. Uh, so check that out. That'll be coming live to you. And I just hope you all are just really enjoying what we're doing and, and the energy that we're bringing you. And you know, Lisa, before we get out of here, you know, anything else you have going on or coming up? Because I know you've been busy. I know between <laughs> keeping yourself prayed up, I know you've been busy. Prayed yeah. up. I'm out here in these streets raising awareness. Also uh, working with a, a nonprofit organization to um, help uh, people lift themselves up out of poverty. So I, I've been busy and I'm going to keep working, you know, till I just, till I, till I die because um, justice is going to come. Freedom is going to come. You know, I do believe that. And we just all have to work as one to get there. Agreed. Very well said, sis. Uh, one other thing that I was just reminded, uh, check out uh, Two Mics Up uh, Facebook page. Uh, our friends over at Ambiance Dance uh, and Leap are putting together a virtual um, auction. Uh, for the, you know, the pandemic has really struck our youth uh, in a way. Uh, it's really been tough for our youth to really make make a way and find themselves. So our friends at Ambiance are putting together a virtual auction. So you can see that information on the two mics up page or you can visit Ambiance Dance Studios uh, where the information is. Check that out. Go out and support. I think it's a great cause. And uh, you can follow two mics up online at www.twomicesup.com. You can continue to follow us across our social media, Facebook, IG, Twitter, and YouTube. You know, if you're watching this, 
hit that little subscribe button down there and make sure you hit that bell so you can stay on top of what's coming next from two mics up lisa and i you know we're here for you and like we always do as we close out stay safe stay blessed mics out mics out